Hi, everyone, and welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted to be talking with someone who has worked in the worlds of animated films, uh, the world of comics and comic strips, as well as some illustrations in uh, books that we'll talk about, I'm sure, as well, given the education focus that tends to happen on the show. And that is creator Stephen E. Gordon. May I call you Stephen? Is that okay? You may call me Steve. That's perfectly fine. All right. All right. Sounds yeah. great. Sounds great. Uh, well, thank you for taking some time on a busy day and joining me and representing the Oscars there as well. <laughs> thank you. Okay. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I mentioned animation, so I suppose we can start there uh, and talk a little bit about your journey to storytelling. And I know that you worked on X-Men Evolution being a title, Wolverine and the X-Men being another title as, uh, I believe, director on that yeah, one. Yeah, I was just the director on that one. I mean, I, I helped out a little bit with some of the character stuff, but mostly director. Yeah. 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 And Ultimate Avengers as well. Is that right? right. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious about what connected you to comics, comic book characters, and, and those kinds of stories. Well, um, way back when I was a little kid, back in the 60s and stuff, I'd read comics. That was kind of a thing. And I uh, had no intention of getting into comics or anything. In fact, I kind of put them aside when I probably got into my teens or sooner, maybe even. Um and, but as I got into um, uh, animation, they seemed to kind of pull me back in. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, when I got the, the job working on uh, X-Men Evolution, I had no idea who most of those characters were. You know, I knew the original X-Men back when Stan Lee and Jack Kirby were doing those. But other than that, I, you know, I had only vague understandings of who Wolverine was and some of those others so so yeah. i kind of leaped in with full body and uh just did what i could I had to learn real fast and uh <laughs> pick it up as i went so yeah yeah now with, with storytelling in general um where did that kind of begin for you when did you know you wanted to tell stories uh well the story i, I guess even early on in animation, uh, I started getting involved in storytelling. Um, I was, uh, even when it, my job didn't require it, I still always offered my two cents. Sometimes they would take it, sometimes they wouldn't. But uh, yeah, I'd say early on when I was working on um, Fire and Ice, back way back when, in the uh, late uh, early 80s, I guess. Um, I helped with story a little bit in there. And then when I went to Disney, I was involved somewhat in story, even on the uh, films that I was on. And then I was uh, unofficially in the story department on the development of uh, Oliver and Company. So I was involved then. And then nice. after that, you know, just kept being involved in story to one degree or another. And, you know, when I was director, you're know, often involved in story as well, even in TV stuff. Mm -hmm. So on X-Men Evolution, the way it would work is uh, we, the directors and the producer would all go to lunch together and we'd kind of come up with ideas and break stories that way. And then we would pass them on to the writers and the story editor and stuff. So nice. come up with plans and suggestions and, knew what we wanted to do so mm -hmm. and that still continues to this day to a large degree in most of the jobs i've had so yeah yeah i know that you've collaborated with um martin powell yes, on some sure. comics and comic strips and uh mm -hmm. he's been on the show a couple of times now and i think we have another talk scheduled to talk about kolchek um so so with that in mind just curious about uh, some of the most positive collaborations and the experiences that you've had across media. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, definitely working with Martin on the uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs strip, uh, Eternal Savage, that was definitely great. That was like a uh, throwback to back when I was a kid. I used to read all the Burroughs books and stuff, so it was great being able to work with him on that. And I thought what he did with the adaptation 
for that strip was wonderful. Uh, I just wish uh, we could have continued in one degree or another, and it's we haven't. Uh, so, uh, but I'd love to work with them again sometime in the future. And coincidentally, uh, there you mentioned Kolchak. I'm actually uh, listening to the audio books, the Kolchak collection. Oh, so, love it, love it. Yeah, <laughs> nice. So, that's an interesting uh, coincidence, I guess. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Mark Ellis, I'm working with uh, on a uh, adaptation of um, an old pulp novel, uh, Werewolf in Paris, I believe. Nice, nice. Love the pulps. Yes, uh, I guess technically it's kind of the first uh, werewolf book, I guess, that was written. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was made into a movie years and years ago and stuff, but uh, we're, we're, it didn't lean too closely to the book, obviously, but you know, we're, we're trying to get closer to the book. It's set in the 1890s in France and stuff. <clears throat> so there's that. Mm -hmm. And I'm also working on a... Uh, couple of other small projects that I can't really discuss too much, but that that's mm -hmm. sort of one that's been out there and been discussed previously. But, and, you know, and also obviously I, well, not obviously maybe, but I just, it just got published, a book I worked on, did all the illustrations for called um, Mark of Death. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was uh, written by a couple of guys that were in this uh, screenwriting Thing and they're using it as a way to kind of pitch it as a project, but we actually they actually went ahead and published it as well. Nice. So that that's out there. So that's nice. So and obviously in film, you know, I, it's a very collaborative media. Animation is very collaborative. So you know, everyone you, you, you got to throw stuff out there and hope that it works, or you change it and you play with it and. You know, working in a story room is always is one of the best things about being in the story department. It's not, you know, there's storyboarding and then there's being a story person. And working in the story room is always great. You know, you get to just kind of shape the movie. Even if someone wrote a script for it, you still at, end up reconstructing it in the story room and stuff and coming up with new ideas and playing with it and kind of manipulating it. So that's always great fun so. nice nice uh, you seem to have a a talent and affinity for stories that involve some kind of science fiction or fantasy element is that a, a particular direction you like to explore well it, it i mean it's something that when i was a kid once again you know i was reading comics i read the burroughs books and i read a lot of mm -hmm. fantasy stuff so i kind of naturally lean in towards that but i'm also very you know capable of working on the talking animal pictures as we call them and stuff you know i worked on over the hedge i worked on um uh shrek 2 i uh you know there's a lot of movies like you know swan princess you know so it's not it doesn't i mean they all have fantasy elements because they're animation related to a large degree but uh they're, they're not all science fiction or superhero related obviously right right so, yeah so that you know, they all have stuff, and even on the show I'm currently directing on, uh, which is a show for Disney Junior, it's a preschool show, and, and you know I'm kind of involved in kind of manipulating the story and uh, directing it and kind of molding it to work as best I can and stuff. So, so but yeah, I, I think I I like to think I have a good sense of story and know how to use it when i have to so. yeah yeah but then i imagine it's rewarding creating creating also for a younger audience i was thinking about your i can read books the that yeah. feature um popular characters so that that links really nicely with um working on a project for disney junior so i imagine getting to kind of reach to a younger audience and, and shape them early on is very rewarding yeah, that, that, that was. I, I loved doing those books. I mean, it, A, it was a fun job, but also it was nice knowing that it, it, uh, it, a lot of kids were using those and uh, their parents were using them to help teach them to read and stuff. In fact, I heard from several comic book writers that those were the books they were showing their kids. Oh, I love that, yeah. To, you, know, um, you know, one guy who's known for his... Um, 
work in doing Batman and stuff, you know, you know, made a big point of uh, talking about these books and stuff, that these are the ones that he's showing his kids and stuff. And there were uh, several others, too, that did the same thing. But it was just kind of like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I hadn't thought about it. Like, they're not showing them their own comics that they wrote. They're showing them these particular books because they're more age-appropriate. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'm curious also about spaces where people can follow along with things that you're doing curious about um the i guess you could say um projects that you can talk about um things of that nature where folks can sort of, sort of uh see what's next sure well i'm on linkedin i'm on facebook i've got a art of page on facebook as well as my personal page and you know i'm on all the other things instagram uh, blue sky and threads i don't use those two very much just because i don't think they've kind of found their footing yet and, and not, don't want to waste too much time on them frankly um but if you google my name stephen e gordon you can find a lot of stuff out on me <laughs> stuff i'm floating out there and stuff a lot of art and whatnot um but you know i i yeah, as far as the work I'm working on, you know, the, the current project I'm on is for Disney Junior. It's it has been announced, and I can't say that it's uh, called Ariel. It's about the Little Mermaid when she's a little kid and mm -hmm. stuff, and her friends and her adventures and stuff. So, so there's always that. Uh, and uh, there's uh, other projects that haven't come out yet that will come out eventually, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> So, uh, you know, one of them's from Marvel, and I can't talk about that yet. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but hopefully we'll be able to in the near future. So, yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick Fury will be knocking on your door if you say much more. I understand. You'd be, <laughs> you'd be shocked. I mean, it was all about, you know, even amongst ourselves, we couldn't, it, it might, because there were a bunch of different uh, groups in the studio, and you couldn't use your the correct name for the show amongst everyone else. You had to use the code words and the nick and the initials and stuff it was very oh, wow. very strange but you know i guess that's why they're who they are i guess so. yeah yeah so. very true um well i think i have maybe one more official question and then sure. we can hit anything that we missed uh being somebody that, that works with young people and we've talked a lot about uh your history in creating and uh starting young i'm curious about uh, any words of encouragement, advice, wisdom you would give to young people that are saying, oh, I, I want to tell stories someday, be it in comics or film or whatever it happens to be? Well, I, I would suggest that they immerse themselves as much in other people's work as possible. I think mm -hmm. you want to be a writer. I think reading a lot is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you can be a good writer if you haven't read enough. Um and the same with any of that type of thing. I think if you want to make film, I think you have to watch a lot of film. I think you have to understand it. Even if you've got something completely new to say or whatever, I think knowing what other people have said mm -hmm. and seeing the, the amount of differences between filmmakers and writers and stuff, I think is important to see. So I, I would do that. I, I mean, just study and do it and keep trying and you know, uh, working it and asking friends for opinions or if you can uh, network with people that actually do it for a living, I think, and if they will give you advice, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, thank you, Steve, for taking the time. Thank you for talking with me and glad to talk with you again anytime. No problem. My pleasure. Thank you.